Shalom, brothers and sisters, and welcome to this week's Sabbath service. I'm going to start off by reading a scripture from Jeremiah in the Old Testament, chapter 18, verse 6. O house of Israel, cannot I do with you as this potter, saith the Lord? Behold, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are ye in mine hand, O house of Israel. Before we begin, I want to give a special thank you and shout out to brothers James and Daniel for putting together a message for the service and a prayer for the service. As far as prayer requests, I would ask that you pray for my family, my extended family, my, my friends, my, the friends of my family that are finally taking the time to mourn the loss of my grandparents. They had a huge impact on the, the village where they lived here in Ohio and the people that they came in contact with. And they really were, my grandmother in particular, the glue that, that held things together. And so we are mourning them and we appreciate any prayers that you could offer on our behalf. We've also had other brothers and sisters that are in need of prayers. As usual, there are people that are sick and afflicted. Um, I haven't had any any contact from anyone with COVID, thankfully, this week. This has been the first week in a while that I haven't said, there's someone with COVID, could you please pray for them? So that's a real blessing. And so we should really remember that and be thankful for that in our prayers. And at the same time, I'm sure there are still people out there suffering through this disease and, and others. So let's remember these brothers and sisters in our prayers as well. There's also a brother that I came into contact with this week that is currently seeking a new job. So if you could please pray for him and his family that everything will work out in a way that is spiritually, emotionally, psychologically, and financially beneficial for, for him and for them so that they can have the financial resources they need and, and also the time they need to grow as a family and to grow in their spiritual journey. Grow together in their spiritual journey, I should say. And we also have a couple of seekers that have reached out about the fellowship and asking some really good questions. Um, they are from different parts of the world, not just the United States. One of them I have to use Google Translate to talk to this brother. But they're asking some really good questions and, and they're, they're wanting to understand better this idea that we preach as a fellowship on unity. What is it? Why do we talk about it? Why does it matter to us and to God? And they're, they're looking to see if their hearts can be open to this idea of the one true church being a universalist church of Christ that's in our hearts rather than a particular sect or denomination. So I've asked you in the past to please pray for those that are that are seeking the gospel. In this case, we actually have some people that I feel impressed by the Spirit to ask you to, in particular, pray for, to pray on for them and their families. Other than that, there are no other prayer requests. So at this time, if you'd like to go ahead and pause the video for an opening hymn and a prayer, we'll be here when you get back. At this time, we're going to join in unison for the Shema. For those that are new to these services, this is an opportunity for us to, as a fellowship, worship together in Christ. And we do so by reading Deuteronomy 6.4. I'm going to read it in Hebrew first and then in English. And then I'm going to pause so that we together, wherever we are and whenever we're doing this, can read back the Shema in English so that we can be one as a congregation, regardless of where we are or when we're doing this. Shema Yisrael, Yeva Elohenu, Yeva Echad. Hero Israel, Yeva is our Elohim, Yeva is unity.
I'm not going to turn the time over to Brother James for a message. Hello, everybody. My name is James Piper. I'm here filling in for David today for the uh, Sunday message or Tuesday message or Saturday message. It really doesn't matter what day you listen to this, uh, this message because it's on YouTube and we can get to it anytime we want. So that gives us ultra flexibility to worship God in our own time. Uh, we just love this new technology, and, and I love what David's doing, and I want to take this very quick opportunity to do what all YouTubers do, um, is to encourage everybody listening to like and subscribe this video, and I think that's very important because we want this uh, message and all the previous messages to get as many views as possible because we're called to uh, proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ to all people. And in order for that to do that, the YouTube algorithm needs to get us um, more higher profiles. So I'm asking you to go ahead and, and like this video and, and subscribe to this channel, share it with your friends, and, um, and let's, let's keep this going. I think we're doing some great things today. Um, so for the message today, I'm going to be reading from the Old Testament, and that's Jeremiah 18. 1 through 11. And I'm going to try to do this in one take um, because sometimes when I read, I kind of jumble my words. So I apologize in advance if I do that. Um, and and uh, basically uh, what this particular part of Jeremiah is called um, in the Christian world is, is the potter's house. So we're going we're gonna to listen and figure out what this is saying here. It says, it starts with, this is the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Go down to the potter's house, and there I will give you my message. So I went down to the potter's house, and I saw him working with the wheel. But the pot he was shaping from clay was marred in his hands. So the potter formed it into another pot, shaping it as it suited him. Then the word of the Lord came to me. He said, could I not do with you, Israel? As the potter does, declares the Lord, like the clay in the hand of the potter, so are you in my hand, Israel. If at any time I announce that a nation or kingdom is to be uprooted, torn down, and destroyed, and if, I, if that nation, I warn, repents of its evil, then I will relent, and I will not inflict on that disaster I had planned. And if at another time, I announced that a nation or kingdom is to be built up and planted, and it, it does evil in my sight and does not obey me, I will reconsider the good that I intended for it. Now go, now therefore, say to the people of Judea and those who are living in, in Jerusalem, this is what the Lord says, look. I am preparing for a disaster for you and devastating plan against you. So turn from your evil ways, each one of you, and, and reform your, your ways and actions. Oh, God wants to uh, destroy the uh, people that aren't um, that are being evil. So that's something that really um, sticks out with me. Um, we want to repent. We want to be the best kind of humans possible. But sometimes we fall short, um, unfortunately. Um, but there are ways to repent. We can repent. Sometimes it's hard to. Sometimes we don't even know that we did something bad. Um, but God has given us the opportunity to do that. So he will, rec uh, he will uh, reconsider those horrors and, 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 and all those bad things, if we do our best to, um, to be good people and to try to acknowledge our wrongdoings. We need to turn our way, ourselves away from, from sin the best we can. But the, the thing I really liked about this particular, um, how the, you know, the thing I really liked about this particular passage was was the symbolism of the clay in the hands of a potter. So sometimes, I know with me, sometimes I'm a 
a little bit of a work in progress, that's for sure. I'm 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 the pot with the holes in it, or I'm the pot with no handle. So when you're drinking your your beverage, you're you're burning yourself while you pick up the pick up the pot. Um, we are we are in we are the clay, and we are trying to be made in the best in the most useful pot possible. And God is our is our potter. So so if you really think about it our experiences in this life and what we do is a part of that clay making process where we're making a pot. Um, so what kind of pot is it going to be? Is it going to be, is it going to be artsy? Is it going to be perfect? Is it going to look like one of those uh, uh, pots you see at Costco? Or, or are you going to, are you going to get a pot that looks like something that a second grader made in his art class? We don't know. Um, all pots are precious just like all people are precious. Everybody deserves some uh, to, to be used to build the kingdom. So one of the things I've, I've thought about with the, with the work in progress thing, um, and, and when I read the scriptures, I instantly thought of my previous experience in, in the Utah uh, tradition. So I was, um, I left the church, when I was a priest and I came back uh, about uh, 12 years later and I wanted to uh, be re-engaged with the church. So as time went on, um, I became more involved with callings and things like that. And they, they gave me some callings that, that best fit my talents, but they also gave me a calling for um, being a Sunday school president. And I thought, gosh, you know, couldn't they have found someone else that is more uh, seasoned and has more um, experience being a Sunday school president or, or, or even, even a deacon's quorum president, anything. I was never in that, that spot before. And, and I've heard other people talk about, like in other traditions where they were called to high priest. And they said, you know, wow, I'm, I am not a high priest. You know, I don't know if I can fulfill those roles. Um, as a high priest, I haven't lived the best life, and I and I what's the space that my my pot has holes in it. Um, but what I've heard, what I've learned over the years, listening to people, and then even in my experience, um, is that is that sometimes we are called to serve in capacities that we aren't ready for because we need to be put in those situations where we can um, be molded. So you're never going to learn anything if you don't uh, take a risk and, and try, try new things. So when I was a Sunday school president, I really didn't know what I was doing. I, um, I found it difficult to talk to um, the people um, in the church, asking them to substitute for uh, classes, um, finding people to teach classes, um, even filling in was difficult because I was so green and I was in, and I was so um, inexperienced. And then, then I also went to um, board council meetings where we we talked about the pastoral needs of the people in the congregation. And um, and you know this was totally foreign to me. I mean, you had a lot of people in there that are very talented uh, in um, serving uh, serving the church even people that I've known my whole life were in that room. And that's like, why am I sharing a space with these people? I was sharing a space with them because God was trying to teach me some stuff. And um, I did learn quite a bit from that experience. You know, I learned how to talk to people. I learned to kind of teach a class. I'm not that great at teaching classes, uh, but, you know, I do my best. Um, I think a lot of people do their best too. Um, the other thing too, is that, you know, sometimes you get in a situation where you're disappointed with somebody too. Like you, you know, you feel like, you know, you made a calling for someone and, and they're just not into teaching that class and you kind of blame yourself. It's like, wow, you know, I was blocked from inspiration on that one, or I made a really big mistake, but we don't know when we call people to do things or, or when we ask people to do things, or when we work with people, we don't know what they're learning too. So again, we are all being formed in that pot. We are all becoming something. Um, and hopefully it's beautiful at the end. Um, 
And, you know, it's all about us um, trying to function within a community where we can have that same, uh, that same goal, whatever that goal is. If the goal is to um, uh, teach kids, little kids about Jesus, that's, that's, that's the goal. Uh, and we all work together to, to, to do that. Or, you know, or even teach adults. It, it really doesn't matter. So I encourage all of us to step outside our comfort zone and to let God mold us into, into who we are. And I also don't want to forget the other part of the, of, of the story, too, about uh, the, uh, the repentance part, too. We all have stuff to repent about. Um, and sometimes it takes us a long time to figure out that we did something wrong. And it might have been because it was uh, we didn't know that something happened or we didn't know that we needed to repent until we either got feedback from somebody that said, hey, that wasn't very good of you that, you know, you hurt my feelings there. Um, or or even just put in new situations like, wow, you know, and you look back on what you did previously and it's like, wow, I really messed up here. And 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 that's when you ask God to uh, um, for forgiveness of um, of your shortcomings. So I encourage all of us to do our best and, and to um, and to live our uh, live in our communities the best we can. And um, I give you this simple message in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, James. Again, I really appreciate you taking the time to share this message with us this week so we could have a worship service. I'm now going to play a recording of me reading our statement on communion. And then Christine is going to offer our sacrament prayers. If you're new to these videos, the way that we do this is Christine, who is a ordained high priestess, reads the bread prayer and then the prayer for the wine and the water for the communion. And then we offer an opportunity for you to pause the video so that you can partake of the sacrament and meditate on the atonement of Jesus Christ. At this time, we welcome all present to Christ's table. We invite all who would participate to do so as an expression of the peace and love of Jesus Christ, in whose name we worship. The Lord's Supper is a sacrament, a time to focus on the life, death, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As disciples of Christ, we renew our covenants and recommit together to his mission, to grow closer to Jesus Christ as individuals and as a community worshiping Jesus Christ through God's Word, the sacrament, ministry, outreach, Kabbalah, and Jubilee. We encourage all that are worthy to receive communion to do so frequently and devoutly. O oh God, the Eternal Father, we ask Thee in the name of Thy Son, Jesus Christ, to bless and sanctify this bread to the souls of all those who partake of it that they may eat in remembrance of the body of thy Son, and witness unto thee, O God, the Eternal Father, that they are willing to take upon them the name of thy Son, and always remember him, and keep his commandments which he hath given them, that they may always have his Spirit to be with them. Amen. O God, the Eternal Father, we ask thee in the name of thy Son, Jesus Christ, to bless and sanctify this wine to the souls of all those who drink of it, that they may do so in remembrance of the blood of thy Son, which was shed for them, that they may witness unto thee, O God, the Eternal Father, that they do always remember him, that they may have his Spirit to be with them. Amen. Once again, thank you for taking the time to worship with us as saints and fellow Christians. As James said in his message, it is wonderful that we have this opportunity and this blessing to be able to do so through this technology, that wherever we are, we can be one, that we can step forward and worship with other saints that maybe we don't agree with every single iota of theology, but we all understand the gospel of Jesus Christ and we share in the teachings of his doctrine. We repent and to come unto him. At this time, Brother Daniel is going to offer us a closing prayer, and that will conclude our service. Again, thank you to all those that participated this week.
Good Sabbath, brothers and sisters, here for online fellowship and worship of the one true God, even the living God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, in the name of his Son, Jesus the Christ. I was asked by my friend David to share a prayer for this week's video, so now I'm going to go ahead and move on to a prayer written from the contents of my own heart and in accordance with the law on prayer, as given by James J. Strang um, in the book of the Law of the Lord. O Eternal Father, you who know the contents of our hearts and provide for us when we are in want, we thank you a million times over to the ends of the earth for the glory and grace that you pour so freely into our lives when we practice the act of faith that our covenant with you so requires. We pray that our hearts might not be hardened onto your teachings and to the experiences that would bring us home and into the fold of our Good Shepherd. We pray that you be with those who are weak, afflicted, or in want of their basic human necessities. We pray that you will be made manifest unto us, that our burden might be lightened as we labor to see earth as it is seen in heaven. We hope we have not kept you in wait too long and do apologize for our many sins. We would walk with you if you would have us, um, and we know that you will deliver us onto our inheritance. May we walk out of Babylon with our heads held high, um, with the full faith that our Redeemer lives. All of the above we pray in the name of your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs>